Welcome to the final used PC parts hunt in Japan for at least 2024 because I have to go back to Australia very soon but with Tokyo lately it has just been insane the deals that we've been picking up in the last couple of months here and as always one good turn deserves another but also I was thinking about going on a country tour however I realized all the junk stores that I used to go to in the past They've all got terrible pricing now to the point where the discrepancy between pricing on these used PC parts at these junk stores and Tokyo right here with all these good stores now is just such a big difference that I'd be wasting so much time and also gasoline going around to these places and getting bust after bust. And what made it so was that I went to my local hard off recently and sometimes they've got decent deals and I just saw the, a GTX 1650 for over 100 USD and I thought, yeah, I'm in the wrong place here where I'm used to picking those kinds of cards up for nearly half that price. And the saddest thing about it all is that local hard off that's close to where I live has actually been probably one of the best hard offs too. So ladies and gentlemen, get your used PC parts hunting capes on and let's go for a tour and see what bargains we can find. So we've come out of the first junk paradise and as you can see the bags are full of good deals. The first being an RTX 3070, a little over 200 US dollars and it's a pretty good model. I mean it looked like it's in really good condition. The guy said it's got a problem with the fan and one of the fans has a noise. But every time these guys at Junk Paradise have told me that there's problems with the fan noises, I get the cards home and there's literally nothing wrong with them after I just at least give them a quick little spray down. Then beside that, we've got a bargain on a B550 Pro 4 motherboard here. We got this for, I think, a little over 30 something US dollars. Now, at least in the last month, the Japanese yen has appreciated a little bit against the United States dollar. But if I'm picking up these deals where the prices in yen are cheaper than that exchange rates dropped, then I'm still winning as we can see here. But the Pro 4, this has apparently got a dead audio output or something he said to me. And I'm thinking that's probably not a problem. Maybe someone uh, just put some uh, crumbs in there off their hamburger and we just got to clean that. <laughs> that audio poured out and we should be good to go again. Then beside that, we've got two X470 master boards here and they were going for around $50. So really good price on some X470 boards, but apparently one of them has a busted HDMI port. And I'm thinking, well, if I'm building a Ryzen 5000 series, say an X3D, a 5700 X3D system, it's gonna have no iGPU anyway. So there's a win. And then beside that, we've got this NVMe drive on the other one that's apparently missing a screw or something so yeah i mean it's going to cause zero issues for me at all on all these deals or hopefully but let's move on now to the next store which is another junk paradise but i'm starting to also see a little bit of a trend because someone in australia told me gpu prices are back up on the rise again at least for the low end but we will check that out a little bit more because the first store did kind of correlate with that with 1660 prices and 1080 prices being a little bit elevated to at least last month and the month before. So we just now visited two stores, one of which is really good lately. Last month we picked up an RTX 3050 from this place for a bargain. And this month we picked up the same RTX 3050. They got this bulk deal on the eight gigabyte cards, but you're only allowed one uh, purchase per visit, I guess, per day. 
So I quickly just went in there and snagged up my RTX 3050, brand new in bulk packaging, but also they've got some other really good deals on new parts at this Arc place. So for instance, RAM, SSDs and things like that. But also you may notice we're doing the tour a little bit different this month, and that's because we're doing it in reverse. But what I'll do is I'll show you a map of usually the tour I do from Akihabara, because a lot of people have been asking me both via email and via the comments, what uh, stores do I go to? So I'll just quickly guys, I'll just really run through a map of all the shops that I visit when I'm in Akihabara for all the deals. And usually they've always got something every time I come here. I'm usually never coming up with a, a bust, whether it's new or used parts. So really good deals so far. And I've only visited three stores and the other was a second junk paradise. But this junk paradise, I think I'm just gonna stop visiting it because it's only got one little shelf for computer parts and it's usually a bust. And last month it was a bust, this month it was a bust. Uh, they just really had no good deals here that the other junk paradises where they've got a lot more parts and of course, a lot better deals. But let's keep going through with this tour where there's just another junk paradise down the corner here. So there's like three in a really small cluster. But this uh, third one usually has, it's sort of in the middle of Akihabara, it's usually got the deals that we like. So let's go check out if we come up lucky. But also, you guys uh, requested a different mic this month. I was wearing the AliExpress field mic banger the people were just constantly making fun of it in the comments and my insecurities have kicked in now. So we're back to the usual mic. So do let us know though, which do you think sounds better? This one I think lets in a bit more background noise. So, but it looks better. So we've now just stepped out of the third junk paradise with some good and bad news. And we'll start off with the bad news first, and that is that there was no good deals on graphics cards in there. In fact, compared to last month, I've noticed, especially 1080s, 1660s, and stuff like that, they've crept up around $15 to $20 on just sort of general flat prices. So maybe my friend telling me about GPU prices going up in Australia there's some truth to that, and it's actually something in the back of my mind that's been bothering me ever since we haven't got any sort of entry-level decent cards from NVIDIA. And I mean, let's be honest, the last time we got a decent card in the $200 range was probably the 3050 or the 1660 Super, and the problem there with those cards, especially the 3050, was things went up in price because it came out during a crypto boom. And then we have the 3060. I mean, you can still get them for a little under $300. But the bottom line is there is no like sub $200 cards being launched from Nvidia. And that's a big problem because there's a lot of buyers who want budget gaming systems. And especially if their friends have got Nvidia cards and whatnot, they're gonna want an Nvidia graphics card. So the only way to go then is the used market. And if there's all this pent up demand for the used market for these cheap graphics cards, then that means supply and demand is only gonna go up in price. Though there is the RX 6600, but they're on the shelves used and new, and they're not being bought up at any real pace to make the prices go up for then. But do let us know in the comments what you guys think about this situation, especially where you live. Is it a different story or is it a trend that's emerging? But let's get on to the good news, and that is we got two CPUs while we're inside, and they were both Ryzen 7 1700s. Now, we got these for, I think, a little over 30 USD a piece. So eight cores, 16 threads. I'm happy with those two CPU purchases. But speaking of other CPUs in there, really nothing special standing out, except for there are indeed sort of higher end Intel CPUs starting to fill the shelves on the used market more than they were last month. So I guess this worry about these CPUs degrading and causing problems is becoming more apparent in the mainstream and we are starting to see the effects on the shelves. Anyway, the junk paradise we just came from is over there. I just had a nice kebab here. It's pretty much the only place I eat at in Akihabara because it's just quick, easy, good value. You don't have to wait in any queues, but quickly scoff that kebab down. I got the beef one 
and we're going to move up just over here like that's how close everything is i can show you it in one slide dos para is right over there we're going to go hit that up and there's also buy more just on the corner before dos para so let's go check out these two stores So this is gonna sound a little bit crazy, but if you've been watching Tech Yes City for a long time, you'll know yeah, it's not that crazy. But anyway, we were going into those other stores that I mentioned, and actually, I at that stage, I had found a Wraith Prism, and these were going for like a little over 10 USD. They were calling them junk because they didn't want to hear any complaints, but, and I was like, damn, if I, if I had longer in Japan, I'd probably just clean out the whole shelves of those and then put them on a boat, send them back to Australia because uh, boat shipping is so cheap to get stuff like this back to Oz. And But the problem was there too, they only allowed two per person. So you kind of got to live close to Tokyo, go in there every day to you know grab your two or whatever and stock up. But that was a bargain. But then I went into DOS Para and I was kind of like, I was like, I was thinking, well, there's there's a few motherboards here. I, I'll put them on the shelves because at that stage I was already carrying quite a bit of stuff. And so I was like, all right, well, I'll come back to the motherboards if I go look at the other stores quickly, check out what they've got, just so I don't, so I'm not lugging around heaps of more stuff while I'm looking at other stuff. But then I, I quickly walked into Skumo, and that's when it happened. I was just like, wow, I know what's going to go on here. I'm looking at all these GPU prices. They've got the 3060 Ti's. I mean, sure, they're coming in at roughly the same price that we paid for that 3070, but that's a good price. Like those prices, you're not seeing them at other stores. So I picked up three 3060 Ti's. Now, keep in mind, this is the price you're paying if you are on a tourist visa, that little bottom price there, because they're taking the tax off for you. So we're picking up three 3060 Ti's. I then saw they had the 3050s on the shelves and I'm like, I'll take all four of those because again, that's a pretty good price for a 3050 eight gig. And then after that, they had a 3080 on the shelves. Just like last month, we got that really good deal on a 3080. Now telling me something about this card, like it had a little bit of rust on it. I checked it out and it really had nothing on it. I think there was an overreaction there. Then after that, he's asking me, what else do you want? And I'm like, all right, We've got a 4080 Super here. Um, again, like the cheapest I've ever seen a 4080 Super on the shelves for, not just in Japan, but also in Australia. And I asked him, why is someone selling a 4080 Super so soon? And he said, oh, it wasn't enough power for them. <laughs> they upgraded to a, um, to a 4090, but yeah, we're gonna go through all these GPUs, guys, test them out one by one. I'll actually put up the total tally here up on the shell uh, screen for you soon after we just talk about this one right here. 1660 Super, and it's going for like one of the cheapest prices I've ever seen a 1660 Super go for. Now I asked him what was wrong. He said fans um, spinning up, making a noise. So we've got two of those in today's pile here where they claim the, the uh, fans are bad. So we've got that initial 3070 that we got and then we got the 1660 Super here. So we're going to test out those first, see what's wrong with them. But also we got a Ryzen 7 1700, another one. And this one was even cheaper. I think this is even cheaper than the last time going for, a, I think in the 20 USD region, maybe 20 something, 23, 24 USD. Unbelievable price. I mean, I've been picking up, they're the only CPUs I've picked up this month, Ryzen 7 1700s. But as you guys know, last month when I picked one up, 
I was reading the comments too, and you guys had the same mindset. It's like, yep, let's get those Ryzen 7 1700s at that price because that's a bargain. You couple that in with our 3050s, right, that we're getting for cheap, 32 gigabytes of RAM, you got yourself a really nice specced out PC that you can make a good tidy profit on when it comes to flipping. Anyhow, let's get all this stuff unboxed and show you guys that tally. Unfortunately, I don't, I'll try test out these motherboards, but I just don't know if they support the Ryzen 7 7700 because I've packed up all my other stuff. That's all boxed and a lot of that's been shipped off to Oz already. So I've only got like, in terms of testing the motherboards, I might have to sit that one out, but I've got my uh, test system here, my benchmark system. So we're gonna run through that and test out all these GPUs and see if there's any problems. So here's the first of the GPUs that is making the noise and I'll show you a quick clip of what is happening here. It's actually the right hand fan, the bearings just completely gone. But now we get back to here, we're actually benchmarking the GPU and it works really well. So if you're on a budget, this is kind of like the, the poor man's fix. <laughs> and that's just undervolt the GPU and then you can drop the fan speeds down to the lowest they go. And there it is, voila. Let's check out the next one. So here's the 3070, there's actually really good news and that is the fans are just going pretty much 100% and the temperatures are going pretty high. So. All it needs is just a repaste. There's actually, I don't think there's anything wrong with this GPU, except it just needs a new thermal paste. So we're coming back the next morning after testing out all these graphics cards and we've got some really good news to report and that is all of them worked absolutely fine and in fact the fans on the 3070 were absolutely fine too. I just think the card needs a repaste but all the other cards especially the ones from Skumo those guys do a great job of benchmarking the cards making sure there's nothing wrong. And if there is something wrong, they give a really good discount accordingly, like we found out with that 1660 Super, which what I did just before was I checked AliExpress and I can get the replacement fans, actually two of them for $10 USD delivered. So I'll be able to fix that fan and have a spare left over. And I got an amazing deal on a 1660 Super. So basically what happened there was the bearing went out and as we said earlier, if you wanted a budget fix for that and it's your own PC, I mean, I wouldn't sell it with a busted fan, but if it's your own PC or you're building it for a family member and you're on a real strict budget, you can always undervolt the card and then deal with it that way. But what we got here is just an insane haul. I just went overboard at that Skumo because I just haven't seen like, just deals are just on the shelves, like one after the other. We had the 3050s just all in a row there. I'm like, man, I'll take them all. And then we had those 3060 Ti's coming in at the right price. And there was a few other good cards there, like the 4080 Super, I haven't seen one that cheap on the shelves before. And the weird thing about that 4080 Super was it looked really good. Actually a cool looking card that I've never seen before. So I don't know, do let us know what you guys think in the comments about the look of that 4080 Super. Are you jamming with it? Do you think it's a bit too much? I don't know, just I thought it looked pretty cool. But the card is of course a Whopper, uh, bigger than a Hungry Jack's or a Burger King Whopper too. But also as we're testing through these cards, I'm also checking for the headroom. That's just giving the core clock slider a little bit of room there, giving the memory a boost, just to see if any of these cards are sort of busting out on us. And the good news here is, is that all, all of them are doing absolutely fine. I am a little bit worried about the 3080 Ventus because it, it must just be that model perhaps, but the temperatures do seem a little bit high at stock and the I don't think it needs a thermal repaste. And the easiest way to tell is just to feel the back plate. If the back plate's getting really hot, that means 
the cooler is absorbing the heat properly, especially if it's happening relatively quickly, which is why I knew that the 3070 that we tested had a thermal paste problem because the card is just really cool to touch still, but the GPU temperatures are just going really high pretty quickly. So that's an easy way for you guys to tell if a card Im immediately needs a repaste. So I'm a little bit worried about that 3080. I think I heard somewhere that the 3080 Ventus did in fact have a bit of a mediocre or underperforming cooler, though I'd have to check again. Anyhow, what we got here is just a tally that is just absolutely insane. I'll put it up on the screen for you guys. We're coming in around a little over three and a half thousand USD uh, in yen terms over Gorjuman. Absolutely insane haul considering we just got this many graphics cards. I actually haven't picked up this many graphics cards in a single haul outside of crypto um, mass buys in the past. So this sort of marks a new record for the channel. And then of course we got these motherboards here and these Ryzen 7 1700s. I think these are an absolute bargain, these 1700s. I'll be putting them to the test later on when I get back to Australia, put them in a gaming PC and see how well they flip. But the motherboards, I did decide, like I'm actually glad because on the train home, when I was catching the train back home, I checked out the motherboard prices on AliExpress because I was actually gonna buy a few more. I was gonna go back to maybe Tokyo and just buy up a heap more because at DOS Para, they had B550s for 8,000 yen, like all these ASRock Pros, uh, Pro models, and they all looked really good condition. There was like over 10 of them at least. And then I checked out AliExpress and it's like, man, B450. I'm seeing B450 motherboards for around 40 USD delivered. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, okay, we'll just hold off on the, on the motherboard purchases here because AliExpress isn't just bringing those prices on the CPUs. They're bringing them now on the motherboards again because at, I think like in the last year, motherboard prices on AliExpress, for, especially for B450, B550 and that kind of thing, they went up actually quite a bit to the point where it was like much better to buy on the used market or try and get a deal just locally for your motherboards. But now with those prices coming down to the way they are, I'm definitely gonna be trying out some of these latest B450 motherboards that are up for sale, as well as some other boards, and giving you guys reviews on that, tell you if it's a hit or a miss. And um, yeah, do let us know what you think about that idea. But of course, it's always, it's always about the matter of just getting the gaming PC done for as cheap as possible. So what we got here is just an absolute score. Um, I, I, as I said before, I had to call the whole parts hunt just I had to cut it pretty quickly because I just couldn't carry any more. I had a backpack full of parts. I had three big bags and in fact at the skumo I told the guys like oh you know we'll chuck the bags in a service right these 20 cent bags is like we'll give you this service because you're buying so much and I, and I just said oh well about that service can you uh, chuckle <laughs> these boxes out for the motherboards and also these bags and stuff that I got from Junk Paradise uh, because they didn't want to chuck out the boxes and all the stuff for the graphics cards because as soon as you do that, you actually void your warranty. So technically I've voided the warranty now for these motherboards here. But again, the GPUs being much more expensive, being much more of an important purchase, I would rather void the warranty on the motherboards than that of the GPU. So made that decision because I just couldn't carry anything else. And he was like, sure, I'll chuck all that out for you. That's not a problem. So I also realized that motherboard boxes, besides the motherboard itself, they carry a lot of weight because they put all these manuals and CDs and all this other jazz in the box and it really increases the weight. So if you guys are looking for tips for packing things, always go to bubble wrap. Bubble wrap is like the lightest and most efficient way to drop the weight while still protecting the gear. So what I usually do, and even if sometimes, if, if, if posting uh, stuff is pretty expensive, I'll just do what's called a bubble wrap pack. And you just bubble wrap it so much that that's just the package. There's no box. So <laughs> that's a little, bit of, a little bit of hints for you guys. But also another thing is too, you probably wondered why I started the parts hunt in reverse, because usually I go to Skumo like first, or like the junk paradise that's on the other side of Akihabara. And the reason I did that this time, you're probably thinking, Brian, this is a bit, a bit of a script job. You probably went there first before you did all the other parts hunting. Absolutely not. Actually, this month, and I've got some crazy news that's sort of tied in with this. I started off at actually Ueno, and I got off at Ueno Station, which is like, I think it's like a stop before Akihabara, because there's a bank there called UFJ. Now, I, like, it's a long lost bank account that I had, and it had about a thousand bucks in it, I think. And... 
I was just like, guys, can I get this money to my other account overseas? I just want to send this money off and kind of close this bank account down. And they just said to me like, okay, you want to send money overseas. You're going to need a uh, resident card and it's got to have three months validity. And I'm just like, man, I'm on a tourist visa now. Like, and I just said to him, like, I want to send my money from my account to my account overseas. And they're like, we can't do it. We can't do that for you. And I'm like, okay, what is going on in Japan? Because I remember like years ago, you could send money absolutely fine. There's no problems. But now it's like a massive problem. So if you're living in Japan, you might want to think about that. So I'm actually kind of lucky. There's hardly any money in this bank account here. But if you've got money in a bank account here, or you're kind of doing some sort of investing here, I don't know the headaches involved around that if you're not a resident, you're trying to send money overseas. I thought that was completely backwards and I asked them, what's going on here? And they're like, oh, all the laws have gotten really strict um, regarding sending money. And I just said, guys, <laughs> look at the m amount of money I'm trying to send. And I said, surely there's some kind of decision making involved here to just look at the situation and go, hey, this guy's got this bank account since like 2008, I think it was, I've opened this bank account. And you guys are like questioning me about a thousand dollars. Anyway, it was just crazy. But that's why I started off on Ueno because the bank UFJ only has like a branch in Ueno. And then from there, I started walking into Akihabara. And that is why we started off at the other side. Anyhow, all that aside, time for a bit of an update. Do let us know as well in the comments, what was your favorite deal of this parts hunt here today? For me personally, I've got to go with the RTX 3070. I think that's just the bargain we love, right? Just change the thermal pace and you got a perfectly working card, as well as the Ryzen 7 1700. And also you may notice I got that 2080 Ti as well. I think it was on the shelves last month. I was like, all right, we'll give this 2080 Ti another go because the price is pretty decent. It's coming around the same price as a 3070. So yeah, I mean, the market does prefer a 3070 from my experience, but we'll give the 2080 Ti another crack. But finally, let's get on to the last part of the parts hunt, and that is talking about the market, the update here. What is going on? What am I seeing? And what are the trends and all the tech yesonomics tied in with all this? And basically, this month was, for me personally, one of the best parts hunts I've done, but that's because of one store. I actually saw at the other stores kind of a bit of a weird trend where GPUs, at least like 1660 Supers and GTX 1080s, and all those sort of lower end cards were actually starting to go up in price a bit on average. So if you are thinking about sort of stocking up for Christmas on used GPUs, you might wanna do it now while prices are still pretty good, especially as we are talking about before, because there's no sort of low end cards coming out that really hit the spot versus the used market in terms of at least sub $200. So you'll notice a lot of these cards here in today's parts hunts are in that sub $200 mark and they bring an extraordinarily good value for money, especially when it comes to putting them to a gaming PC. So I think that's one thing to look out for. I think CPUs and motherboards, checking the prices of those, at least on AliExpress, they're really good. Uh, so that's sort of like your backup if you can't get good prices on the local market where you are for things like motherboards, CPUs and, and RAM. And also another thing is too, DDR4 memory has gotten really cheap online as well. So those sort of bare bones components for a build, they're nothing to worry about and they're coming down in price. So that's a really good thing. But then GPUs, that's the worrying concern here. Is your GPU going to go up in price? I don't have a crystal ball here, but one thing I do know as always, and I say this in all my part science, is just look at the price you're paying now for what you're getting. Remember, price is what you pay, value is what you get. And what I paid here and the value I'm getting, I'm blown away. And I always do that with my used parts hunts. So always just look at the performance you're getting, especially comparing that versus what's available new. So if we look at the most popular card, RTX 3060, 12 gigabyte, that's your benchmark for what people are paying on the new market. Check out the performance of that, rally it up against the card on the used market, and you're good to go. There's your value, right? And a lot of these cards here, they're gonna be coming in at pretty much double the value of that 3060 at least off the top of my head, maybe certain instances it might be more than that, might be a little bit less, but overall, we're just gonna get a lot more value off the used market. And then when we put that into a gaming PC, people can do their own research and go, hey, this PC is packing a lot of value. 
So that's where we're all about with the used market. Now, in terms of the economic environment going forward, it's like every time I t uh, look at the finance news, it's like, oh, we're, we're going, <laughs> we're heading into recession. We're going into a recession. A recession's coming. And there's talks of America now uh, cutting the basis points by 50 points on the interest rates. So that's like kind of crazy to see that between now and then, I think, again, that catalyst, something big's going to happen, big shock, and then they might even go bigger than a 50 basis point cut. And if that happens, again, it's the same thing as before. Inflation's back on again. So I just see the good deals at the moment, guys. Don't pass them up, especially if you've got a bit of cash on hand. Stock up on the good deals because I don't think they're going to last for all that long, especially in this inflationary environment that's happening. I mean, we saw Japan even kind of raise their interest rates. Not that much, but still... I saw an article where they kind of want to get their interest rates to around 2% in the next couple of years. So that's kind of weird for Japan too. So it kind of looks like there's a trend and that is sort of this higher inflation, not the typical 2, 1 to 2% two that you're used to seeing. It's more like 3 to 4%. And that's um, that seems to be a very dangerous, sticky trend that if these central banks and governments want to stick to, they're going to see just how much of a headache it's going to cause for economies. You want no inflation, realistically. You just want reliable pricing day in, day out, especially when you're doing business. In any business environment, you don't want inflation. It's just horrible. Anyhow, enough rambling aside with the tech economics. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, do stay tuned for the Aussie videos. I will be back to in Australia next month, and I look forward to giving you guys a lot more content. We're going to look into the Ryzen 9000 series launch uh, much more in depth as well a lot of you guys have really been enjoying that content i'll get to the bottom of that because my 9600x it was running pretty good when i did the testing here so i'm kind of shocked that all these other reviewers were just saying it was just a complete write-off when i just thought the only bad thing about 9000 series at least from my testing so far was the value and that's only because as we said before the economic conditions aren't that great right now amd can't control that and the CPUs on like 7,000 are just such good prices. So that's kind of what they've got to contend with. So 9,000 launch, for me, it's like mediocre. But hey, I'll look into it a lot more. And I'll just, when I'm back in Australia, I'll really analyze the other CPUs as well. See what the go there is. But I don't think like it's, it's the end of the world. Put it this way. The easiest way for me to describe products, if they're bad, good, or mediocre, is if... I bought it myself or if I knew someone who bought it, went out and bought this product, would they make a bad decision? Was that a bad decision? If they bought a 9600X for $280, did they make a horrible choice? And the answer is no. They, that CPU is going to fly in games. It's gonna do actually even things like 1080p video editing or even 4K video editing. It's gonna be actually really good. So that CPU is just gonna perform. So yeah, is the value not as good as say a 7800X3D? Sure, but it's still gonna be okay. You know, like you put that in your rig, you're not gonna, <laughs> like your system isn't gonna have suddenly be out of performance. So, but who knows, maybe I'm just a little bit different to the other guys out there and I will catch you guys in the next tech video very soon. If you stay this far and you're enjoying that Tech Yes content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring the bell, and also let us know in the comment section below. Any requests for videos, anything you guys want to see, love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.